Welcome to our meeting. We will start in a few seconds. Dear comrades and friends, I welcome you to our meeting today. On the left party as a party of German imperialism. This is our fifth online meeting in the course of our election campaign. Many of you know how this online meeting works. There are certain rules. We trans this meeting is being broadcast worldwide, so please uh, turn off your mobiles during the lecture. Therefore, we cannot have any questions or interruptions, but afterwards we have the possibility to discuss. The, those who participate in the meeting online can ask questions and hand in comments. And after the online meeting has ended, you can continue discussion locally. Also, those participating online can co leave comments during the lecture so that we can enter into discussion immediately. This is Johannes Stern introducing our present, our lecture today is a very important lecture. We had meetings already on the war in Syria and on revolution and counter-revolution in Egypt and on the armam state armament. All these questions are closely interlinked. The ruling class reacts to the offensive of the working class, which was most clearly visible in Egypt with preparations for war. We analyze on the WSWS that the social basis for this aggressive foreign policy and um, also the policy against the working class, all this is based on mobilizing certain layers of the middle class which is represented amongst others by the left party. The sister party of the left party in Egypt played a decisive role to support the preparation for the military coup in Egypt, which now attacks the working class in the most aggressive manner. The left party openly supported this. It is clear that the left party also in Germany plays the same role and will play the same role when open class struggles erupt. It is already a pillar of Bourgeois' role and as we will bring out in our lecture today, it plays a decisive role in the return of German imperialism, in cuts of social welfare and in the armament of the state and its security apparatus behind the name left party as such is a lie because behind this there is a right-wing bourgeois party. We have drawn out in our how in their election campaign they try to cover up what they are preparing in reality 
as all the parties do, none of them speaks about what will happen after the elections. But the left party is very clear in one point in that it, it wants to form a coalition together with the Social Democrats and the Green Party. They want to an alliance with the parties who openly support war and the destruction of social gains. The elections in Germany are a turning point. They, we have written that the situation in Germany and Europe is the calm before the storm. After the elections, all the problems will surface again. The Euro crisis, preparations for war and attacks on the working class. The media during the past weeks have been continuously calling for more aggressive foreign policy and war. And the bourgeoisie is heading for a totally different government to carry through these attacks on the people. Comrade Uli will speak on this. Um, there's a, uh, what is being discussed in the bourgeois papers is that the method of Merkel has failed. Uh, this is stressed in various newspapers like the Zeit, the Spiegel, leading national magazines. And um, the ruling class is preparing for a much more aggressive policy against the working class. The left party will play a decisive role in this turn and workers must prepare for this by understanding the class nature of this party, its history and its real policies. And I think there's hardly anybody who can speak on this with more authority than Ulrich Rippert, who will hold the lecture today. Comrade Rippert is the, he is, he leads the party for social equality and has been active in the Trotsky's movement for more than 40 years. He has an enormous experience with all these tendencies who now gather within the left party. That is all uh, ex-social uh, democrats and petty bourgeois radicals who enter the left party in order to play a decisive role for the bourgeoisie. So I welcome Ulrich Rippert. Now there's applause and Ulrich Rippert will begin to hold his lecture. Thank you very much, Comrade Johannes. Dear comrades and friends, our uh, subject today is the left party. In our election manifesto we write, the most rotten of all bourgeois parties is the left party. There is nothing left about it apart from its name. Like the other party, it supports welfare cuts, the strengthening of the state apparatus and militarism. In foreign policy, the left party acts as an arm of the foreign ministry. In Syria, it works closely with the pro-imperialist opposition. The social phraseology of the left party is only used to confuse the working class and prevent an independent socialist movement. The left party is the bourgeois party and plays a central role in the defense of capitalist rule. I will demonstrate this in three areas. First, the role of the left party in the war in Syria. In the present election campaign, they call themselves an anti-war party. And I will draw out how much this is a lie. Second, I will talk on the history of the left party and bring out that it's not an anti-capitalist party, but it has come into being as a, an expressly pro-capitalist party. At the end of the GDR, the predecessor of the left party pushed for capitalist restoration and played a key role during the introduction of capitalist exploitation in the East. And thirdly, I will show why all the petty bourgeois pseudo-left groups are supporting the left party. They are part of a privileged middle layer, which in the face of the economic crisis, intensifying class struggles and the return of militarism and war, 
is integrating into the bourgeois apparatus of rule. Now let's begin with the role of the left party in the present war in Syria. The class nature of political parties and tendencies is expressed most sharply in foreign policy. Starting from this, there can be no doubt that the left party is a party of German imperialism. It is an integral part of German foreign policy and works closely with all other bourgeois parties in order to defend the economic and geostrategic interests of German imperialism. Even though the left party on the federal level has not been participating in government so far, it is an integral part of German foreign and security policies. The left party has four members in the defense committee of the federal parliament. This committee meets in secret and plays an important role in carrying out uh, the foreign missions of the army. Leading politicians of the left party participate regularly, regularly in government delegations in order to defend the political and economic interests of Germany internationally. The fact that the left party is prepared to defend the interests of German imperialism with war, this is demonstrated by their role in the Syria. Now that a military attack is coming nearer, they try to cover their tracks, but it is a fact that, like all the other parties, they have been pushing for an imperialist offensive against Syria for the past two years. What concretely has the left party done? From the beginning, they supported the aim of the federal government and of the other parties in parliament to overthrow the regime of Assad and to replace it by a pro-Western regime. As early as December 2012, leading politicians of the left party signed a call <coughs> demanding an intervention in Syria. Uh, apart from that, the left party used their contacts to Syrian oppositionists in order to build the pro-Western opposition who are now calling 24 hours a day for a military blow. Let's look at this call, which underlines how closely the left party collaborates with all the other parties in German parliament. On the 10th of December, in several uh, large media, several large media outlets published a call under the title Freedom Needs Assistance. It was signed by the head of the left party, Katja Kipping, and by Jan van Aken, who also a leading member. And it was also signed by the General Secretary of the Social Democratic Party, Andrea Nales, the leader of the Greens, Claudia Roth, and the President of the Foreign Committee of German Parliament, uh, CDU, politicians. At the same time, the CDU, the SPD, and the Greens in the Federal Parliament decided on the stationing of Patriot rockets and 400 troops at the Syrian border in Turkey. Who is behind this call, Freedom Needs Assistance? It's the initiative Adopt a Revolution. This is a platform who prop make propaganda for war in Syria and who collect money for the Syrian opposition. Adopt a Revolution and parts of the left party work closely together. They portray the brutal imperialist invention in Syria as a revolution and they claim that the Syrian opposition is democratic and peaceful. At the same time, they spread propaganda about the use of chemical weapons and try 
to create support for a military intervention by the West. The, their propaganda, the propaganda pictures make clear that these so-called groups of activists are by no means peaceful, but they are an elementary part of the pro-Western opposition who are vehemently calling for a military intervention. I don't think I have to translate this. Intervention isn't starting the war, it's ending the war. This is one of their propaganda slogans, which is really dictated by various departments of the Secret Service. Above all, Adopt a Revolution supports the so-called local coordination committees. These are part of the national coalition of the Syrian Revolution and Oppositional Forces, or as they call themselves, the Syrian National Coalition which is portrayed by the imperialist powers and their regional allies as a legitimate representation of the Syrian people. Those coordination committees, which are called, hailed by the left parties as revolutionary basis organizations, in reality they are part of the violent and Islamic opposition and are directly financed by U.S by the USA. The local coordination committees are demanding a military strike. On the 1st of September they published this statement which says any strike to the regime must aim to paralyze with attention and precision its air forces, artillery and missiles arsenal being used continuously against civilian areas, with an impact not far from that of mass destruction weapons. A strike must also prioritize civilians and their safety, rather than being at their cost. Moreover, it needs to be accompanied by close coordination with and sufficient support to the Syrian opposition both political and armed, in order to allow for better organization and progress. I think this is very clear. It could not be any clearer. The activists behind Adopt a Revolution have also long been calling for an imperialist intervention adopt a revolution was founded by Elias Perabo, a student of politic, political science in Berlin, together with his friend Ramin Nakile, a Syrian blogger from Beirut. Nakile is a member of the Syrian National Council, which is dominated by the Islamic Muslim Brothers and constitutes the largest faction in the Syrian National Coalition. Already at a meeting of the Syrian Convent in Washington in April 2012, he directly appealed to US President Barack Obama. He said, you have the responsibility to protect our people and in this you have failed. What are you waiting for before you intervene? The real role of the left party in the Syrian war is embodied by the Syrian dissident Michel Kilo. He is a turncoat Stalinist whom the left party has been systematically supporting and promoting during the past two years. In the last year Kilo spoke at several meetings of the left party, amongst other on a meeting by the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation under the title a different Syria is possible, 
and he also spoke at a conference under the title Syria is a political solution possible. The left party is publishing Kilo's contributions in their publications. He regularly contributes to their party papers, Neues Deutschland and Junge Welt. And recently, he published an essay in the latest book of Wolfgang Gerke, a leading left party member on the Syria war, which is entitled Syria, how to destroy a secular state and Islamize a society. This title is the program of Kilo, the peace political program. Kilo and his oppositionist grouping since the end of May has been a member of the National Syrian Coalition and is now playing a leading role in this coalition with his ally Ahmad Shaba. In order to here we have a picture where you can see how Kilo and Raba directly discuss with the American foreign minister. In order to overthrow the Assad regime and establish a pro-Western regime in Damascus, Kilo demands a military blow by the US and is prepared to cooperate with Islamist, Islamist terror groups like with Al-Nusra Front, who are allied with Al-Qaeda. These groups con um, are financed above all by Saudi Arabia. They carry out the most vile crimes against the Syrian civil population and they have policies of attacking the Alevites and Christian minorities in Syria. Kilo recently gave an interview to the website Syria Deeply in which he openly called for a US military strike in order to overthrow the Assad regime and to break the influence of Russia and the Iran over Syria. On the question whether a US military strike was necessary, Kilo answered I think it is necessary that the US and the international community will help the Syrians this is the quote now Kilo's statement in Syria Deeply Org he's reading out the quote Um, the uh, French media reported in February that yeah this is now stop abusing people by encouraging fears and extremists Kilo said I was in Syria and met their members of Jabhat al-Nusra and Liba Ahasuriya these are brigades of free Syrian men, which you often refer to as fundamentalists. I am a Christian and they have received and embraced me, given me awards. The willingness of people like Kilo and Raba to collaborate with violent terrorists and to support a Western military strike. This is very much appreciated by imperialism because it aligns with their strategy to establish a neo-colonial regime, puppet regime. This is precisely the reason why also the left party is being welcomed by German imperialism 
a successor of the GDR State Party SED. They have very good connections to the nom nominally secular Syrian opposition, which is made up for a large part of turncoat Stalinists like Kilo. But they also have close connections to the Syrian regime itself, in which the both official communist parties of Syria are part of the government and have also ministers in this government. Like their allies in Syria, the left party is quite prepared to collaborate with anybody and to do anything in order to defend the interests of German imperialism. Let's sum up the role of the left party in relation to Syria. During the past two years, they have systematically worked to make their contacts to part of the Syrian opposition fruitful for German imperialism. They play a decisive role in the efforts of the German bourgeoisie to establish a post-Assad regime which will take care of the strategic and economic interests of Germany in Syria and the region. The left party is not a party of peace, it's a party of war. Their lies about their real policy serve to mobilize parts of the middle class for brutal imperialist wars and serve to oppress an independent movement of the working class against the war. The lies of the left parties are not limited to the question of war. They collaborate closely with the government in Germany in relation to all important issues. They often stress that they had not agreed to the, um, the saving of the banks, but in reality they supported the procedure which made this vote in Parliament possible. And this was much more important for the government because this new procedure had to be supported by all factions. This is where the stand of the left party was decisive. And when later in the vote itself they voted with no, this was pure tactics because they knew that their vote was not decisive. During their participation in the government in Berlin from 2001 to 2011 where they participated in the city government of Berlin, the left party made very clear whose interests their first their first act in the government of Berlin was to cut wages in public services by 10% pump 21 billion euros into the Berlin banks. At the same time they, there were savings of 75 million euro at the universities and 35 jobs in public services were destroyed. In our last lecture we spoke about the close relationships of the left parties with the secret services. This brings me to the second point, to the history of the Left Party. When the Left Party was formed in summer 2007, out of a, it was a, it was a fusion of the PDS, the Stalinist Party, and the split off from the Social Democrats. At that time, the PDS, the predecessor, already had a long history. It had come out of the GDR State Party SED which renamed itself starting from 1989. At the end of 1989 they called itself SED PDS and two months later they dropped the SED and called themselves only Party of Democratic Socialism PDS. All leading cadre of the PDS had a long history in the SED, the East German State Party, and played now a decisive role during the reintroduction of capitalism in the GDR. Hans Modrow a long year leading member of the PDS had been a member of the Central Committee of the SED for 20 years before in number 
November 1989, he took over the leadership of the GDR government. The task of this government was to organize the transformation of GDR state property into capitalist private property. It was Mordor's task to save the state, the oppressive state apparatus of the GDR and to hand it over to the West German bourgeoisie. Strikes and opposition by workers were suppressed. Mordor always stressed that it was him and not Helmut Kohl who persuaded Gorbachev of the necessity of German reunification. From one of his visits in Moscow he returned with the nationalist slogan German one fatherland long before the CDU the conservatives distributed national flags in Leipzig and Dresden. With his plan of a so-called treaty unity between Western East Germany he paved the way for the monetary reform and his economic ministry, Christa Luft, who had also been a SED cadre for a long time, founded the so-called Treuhand Society on the 1st of March 1990. The task of this institution was to sell off the state property of the GDR. She told about this in a book called uh, The Lust for Property. The Motro government did not even attempt to defend any of the rights or social gains of the working class in the GDR. While still in state power, they surrendered everything. The Motro government was supported by the petty bourgeois parties of the so-called Round Table. These were the so-called New Forum, the United Left, Democracy Now!, Democratic New Start, Initiative, Peace and Human Rights, the Green Party and so on and so forth. The Green League, which was then led by Matthias Platzek, uh, who later became the Minister-President of the State of Brandenburg. All these representatives of the round table participated at the Modro, in the Modro government at the time. They were so-called ministers without... Uh, uh, the, the Modro government called itself the government of national unity. At the time we wrote on this role of the PDS The key role in this unprecedented betrayal was played by the ECD, now the PDS. The Modro government took responsibility for imposing the restoration of capitalism in the GDR and in handing over state power to the German bourgeoisie. Its ministers, like the Minister for Economic Affairs, Mrs. Luft, presented ready-to-use plans which had been worked out for years in the cozy rooms of the bureaucracy and its academic lackeys in order to impose the performance principle, i.e. capitalist exploitation, and the all-sided commodity money relationship, i.e. the capitalist market economy. Despite the efforts of the Modro government, in January 1990, a growing wave of strikes began in the GDR. Modro later explained that he had only two options at the time, either to crush the resistance in the factories in a bloody manner or to speed up the introduction of capitalism. In agreement with the federal government, there, are the elections, there were early elections and Lothar de Maizière was brought to power. In his book, New Start and End, Hans Modrow describes this development in the following words. What mattered to me was to preserve the governability of the country 
to prevent chaos. Uh, by <coughs> chaos, of course, he means revolution. So he said, I understood that the road to unity was inevitable and had to be entered upon with determination. The PDS, from the beginning, was a pro-capitalist party representing the interests of the privileged Stalinist bureaucracy in the GDR and who was very active in promoting capitalist restoration. Very similar as the Stalinist bureaucracies did throughout Eastern Europe and above all in the Soviet Union. During the 90s, the PDS organized in the East German um, states a drastic destruction of social gains in close collaboration with the SPD and the unions. In 1994, they tolerated in Sachsen-Anhalt, the state of Sachsen-Anhalt, the first SPD state government. Now this collaboration of the PDS with the Social Democrats and the unions in order to crush social gains was met by growing opposition. The PDS lost members rapidly from 280,000 when the party was founded in 1990 to about 70,000 members 15 years later. Here you see the development of membership of the left party. 2007 was the uh, uni unification with the split off from the SPD. At the end of the 90s, the PDS promoted a red-green government and supported the government of Schröder Fischer, who then carried out massive destruction of wages. The development of the PDS to the right, which was then continued in the left parties and also the SPD and the unions, all this was an international phenomenon which was directly bound up with the collapse of the Soviet Union and was speeded up by this. We wrote on this decline of reformism in 1992. What has occurred in the former Soviet Union is a manifestation of an international phenomenon. All over the world, the working class is confronted with the fact that the trade unions, parties and even states which they have created in an earlier period have been transformed into direct instruments of imperialism. Against the reactionary politics of the red-green federal government, there was a lot of opposition. There were regular demonstrations on Mondays, the so-called Monday demonstrations, in which many thousand workers participated In some Eastern U German cities, demonstrators co were co calling, we have overthrown the government once, we can do it again. Gysi and Lafontaine, the leaders of the left party, were highly alarmed about these massive demonstrations. The founding of the left party was a direct reaction to this development. It was to create an instrument in order to prevent any further radicalization of the working class. Oscar Lafontaine is a highly experienced politician. He, Lafontaine had prepared the red-green government and had brought it to power. And when it began with its work in 1999, he withdrew from all political posts in his private life. He left the government and the SPD to Gerhard Schröder, who then together with Joschka Fischer uh, very brutally carried out the social attacks on the working class. When the mass demonstrations development against, against these attacks, Lafontaine returned and became politically active again 
he mobilized some trade union bureaucrats, f formed a new group called the WASG and prepared the founding of the Left Party. What he was concerned about was to preserve the social democratic apparatus, which he held to be pillars of bourgeois rule. Just a few words on Lafontaine. In contrast to other social democrats, Lafontaine has never been a left. He studied in a Catholic school with uh, where he was a pupil. After that he studied. He um, This was paid for also by the Catholic Church and in 1968 he wrote uh, when others were active in the student movement of the SDS he was uh, not, uh, he didn't participate at all. He was a supporter of Christian social doctrines and when he entered the SPD he said that he saw this in as being his logical consequence of his Christian philosophy. Above all Lafontaine so in the social democratic apparatus an instrument to suppress the class struggle and to uphold bourgeois rule. This became clear when he became the minister president of the state of Saarland in the middle of the 80s. The Saarland was an important center of steel and coal industry but only about 20,000 jobs were left. Only two mines of formerly 18 mines were still operating. I remember very well as during that time in the early 80s there were many mass demonstrations, strikes and protests by the workers in several s towns in the Saarland. Under Lafontaine's government the protests were quickly suppressed and the coal industry was closed down without much opposition. He, Lafontaine collaborated very closely with Kurt Hartz, the brother of Peter Hartz, who was the author of the um, notorious Hartz IV laws to destroy wages. Kurt Hartz the, was a um, president of the IG Metall Metal Workers Union and at the same time headed the SPD faction in state parliament. He's a typical representative of social democratic union corporatism. At the same time Lafontaine introduced so-called, um, well he introduced forced labor for recipients of social security. Those people now had to, for example, clean parks and public buildings without pay. When his policy and his private life was criticized in the media, he passed a draconic law to limit press, the liberty of the press in Saarland, which had then to be loosened following massive protests. In Lafontaine's eyes, the trade union bureaucracy is an important ally in order to control the working class and oppress any independent movement. He supports their nationalist policies and the defense of German interests. His attack on so-called foreign workers, well, he used a German word which is uh, um, he took from the Nazis this was not an accident. In 2005 he said in Chemnitz that such foreign workers cannot, must not be allowed to take away jobs from German fathers of families. His policy of free market national state is continuously leading the left party further to the right. Recently Lafontaine called a so-called production oriented wage policy in the EU in order to, he said that the wages in southern Europe, in southern Europe productivity is very low and therefore wages should be lowered in these countries too 
because they could then produce much more cheaply. That is, Lafontaine very openly for demanded lowering wages in Southern Europe by 30%. This is, of course, an attempt to split the European working class and to play them off against each other. His partner, Sarah Wagenknecht, who used to lead the Stalinist faction in the PDS called Communist Platform. Ich habe keinen Ton mehr. In Now, uh, Sarah Wagenknecht uh, claims that she has much agreement with parties on the far right when last summer the German government introduced the, a proposal to employ young Southern Europeans in Germany. Wagenknecht opposed this vehemently. She said this was a slap in the face for hundreds of thousands of young people living in Germany and never having a chance. <coughs> These nationalist slogans of the left parties recall the slogans of the Nazis and their demands. Jobs for Germans only. This nationalist policies of the left party is not an accident. They flow directly from their social and political orientation. The left party reacts to the international economic crisis and the intensification of class struggle by turning towards the national state. They want to strengthen the state in order to protect the German economy and especially small against uh, the international competition and in order to oppress the class contradictions within the country. This orientation leads into an extremely right-wing nationalist direction. Wagenknecht is a pioneer in this respect. In the 90s, as the speaker of the communist platform, she supported the DDR regime and the Stalinist policy of socialism in one country. But today, she claims adherence to Ludwig Erhard and to auto liberalism. Erhard was a conservative politician in post war Germany. He was economic minister and chancellor. His economic theory was to combine the free market with a strong, state uh, framework. Wagenknecht now glorifies the old West Germany, the old Western Germany Federal Republic under Adenauer and Erhard. And she glorifies a regime which was characterized by intolerance, anti-communism and cultural backwardness. This makes very clear where the left party is heading. They are, the left party is becoming an expressively right-wing party against the working class, which is also shown in the election campaign. The left party put a counter-revolution in the center of their election campaign. One of their central Posters was revolution? No. What it says on this poster is revolution, and then it says no, and then there are a number of uh, social phraseology like. Uh, minimum wage, mini minimum pension and so on, which is presented as an alternative to revolution. This poster is directed not to 
the electorate but to the ruling class. The left party says if you want to prevent a revolution, like in Egypt for example, if you want to prevent such a revolution, then you need us. We, the left party, are the experts when it comes to preventing the overthrow of capitalism. The left party recalls one recalls the um, statement of Friedrich Ebert, the president of the Social Democratic Party about a hundred years, almost a hundred years ago, who said, I hate the revolution like the sin. Also, at that time it was a party which called itself left and socialist, which then drained the revolutionary uprisings of the working class after World War II in blood and murdered the leaders of the revolution, Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht. This takes me to my third point, the role of the pseudo-left. It must be said that this right-wing nationalist policy of the left party attracts various petty bourgeois organizations in a magical manner. Everything, all these people who called themselves left in the past, all these people now meet up in the left party autonomous groups, post-autonomous anarchists, the so-called anti-Germans who support American and Israeli war policies. These uh, so-called anti-Germans attack the federal government because uh, they say the government is pa too pacifist. The anti-Germans form a relatively strong group within the left party. Also, the state capitalists of the group Marx 21 immediately uh, entered the left parties and dissolved themselves into it. They are today on its right wing and support every dirty maneuver of this party. Christiane Buchholz, which, who is a leading member of Marx 21, is a member of the Defense Committee of German Parliament and has close connections to the secret services who uh, appreciate her role uh, and trust her. Marx 21 is totally integrated into the German state apparatus. Also the um, SAV, which is the um, German offshoot of the CWI, quickly entered the left party. However, they had a problem in Berlin because the reactionary policies of the coalition of the SPD and the Stalinists had created great opposition amongst the people. But after the elections in Berlin in 19, in 2006 in Berlin, the Berliner group SAV knocked on the door of the left party. They sat at their doorstep for two years. In the end, they even went to court in order to force their entry into the left party. Now they are within, inside the left party and carry out all sorts of maneuvers and now even a member of parliament has joined the SAV. They celebrate this as a great success. So this petty bourgeois left group supports all the right-wing policies, all aspects of the right-wing politics of the left party and give it a left cover. That is within the left party, not only the leftovers of the large bureaucracies, Stalinists and Social Democrats have united, but also a whole host of petty bourgeois groups who put forward all sorts of anarchists and reactionary conceptions. The left party is the organization and ideological center of anti-Marxism. They discuss in their meetings writings of the Frankfurter Schule, uh, writings of Sartre, uh, Marcuse, Che Guevara, and so on and so forth.
Their aim is to prevent the development of Marxist perspectives. All these different factions within the left party are united in their mistrust and their growing hostility against the working class who they see as backward, uh, leaning towards fascism and reactionary. And the collaboration with the left party is the mechanism by which the pseudo-left groups integrate themselves into capitalism, its state apparatus and the imperialist war policies. They are part of a privileged layer of the middle class. They have risen up in the ranks of the union bureaucratic apparatuses. They are on the lower levels of the academic milieu. They have posts in the offices of the left party as scientific or other employees. They are financed by projects of the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, which itself is supported lavishly by state resources and funds. The social crisis and the radicalization of the working class threatens their privileged position. And in the eyes of these groups, the left parties and the unions are an instrument to oppress class struggle. The pseudo-left groups have a very specific role. They voice all sorts of Marxist, socialists, sometimes even Trotskyist phrases in order to create as much confusion as possible and in order to prevent the building of a revolutionary leadership in the working class. Their main is to keep workers and youth under control of the corrupt bureaucratic apparatus and thereby within the framework of bourgeois policies. However, the bourgeois, the left party is moving to the right so fast that the pseudo-lefts have problems to keep up. This creates a vacuum which the experts for anti-Marxism and left defense of capitalism deem dangerous. Therefore, so some weeks, some weeks ago, Oliver bensant senon a speaker of the French MPA, came to Berlin in order to found a so-called new anti-capitalist left. 300 uh, frustrated ex-lefts, uh, most of them in pension age, met in the met in Berlin. Many of them had already been members of a dozen organizations, all knew each other personally, and their family dispute concerned the question whether one should stay within the left party or cover, give them a cover from, with, from outside. But this project is politically bankrupt. That is the project of a so-called new anti-capitalist left is politically bankrupt even before it began. The organizer, the former Pabloite Michael Pütz, stopped any further criticism of the left party. He published a fundamental a paper in which he writes, although it may be annoying, we repeat that the first and foremost challenge in this new project, if and when it takes off, will be a non-sectarian policy towards the left party. He says, of course we compete with the left party, otherwise there would be no point in our initiative, but it is our firm conviction that the new project must convey in a convincing manner that our competition takes place in solidarity, so to speak. <coughs> this ridiculous attempt to give an anti-capitalist cover to the left party is not, is above all a reaction to the growing influence of our party. We are the only party opposing the left party on a socialist basis. We have always stressed that the political independence of the working class can only be defended in a struggle against the left party and their pseudo-left defenders. And it is becoming more and more clear that we are right in this. In our election campaign, which will end next week, 
a very interesting and politically important development has taken place. In the face of the rapid intensification of the international economic crisis and the preparation of massive uh, social and political attacks, a political establishment is more and more closing ranks. All parties agree in the policies of the attack on social gains, the limitation of social rights and the policies of imperialist war. So the politic this and all parties who are closing ranks on this reactionary policy agree that these questions must not be discussed publicly during the election campaign. And the left party is quite clearly part and parcel of this bourgeois unity party. When for a couple of weeks ago the ex-interior minister of the Red-Green government Otto Schiele explained that law and order have always been social democratic fundamental rights, fundamental values, that is law and order have always been fundamental values of social democracy, which is quite true. Gregor Gysi applauded and repeated his offer to form a coalition government between the left party and the SPD. And while the SPD and their candidate Steinbrück criticized the Merkel government from the right, the left party concentrated their election campaign to ask the SPD for a coalition. The pseudo-lefts defending, are defending this and in doing so totally integrate themselves into the bourgeois system. So while the political establishment is closing ranks from right to left, on the other side there's only one party and that is us, the PSG. Even the bourgeois media and state television noticed this. In a recent report on the PSG, the first state channel complained those people of the PSG will not stop again and again they explain their Trotsky is free of the world. All other parties they describe as corrupt, bourgeois and Stalinists as well as all the other left groups. One can only say quite correct, they understood what we are saying. This political differentiation, which has become clear during the election campaign, is very important because it has an objective content. It is an expression of a deep division of society and it is announces great class struggles. We have always often stressed that an independent movement of the working class is necessary, but such a movement will not simply arise from spontaneous struggles and protests but requires a political program which is directed against the left parties and their supporters. In our election campaign we made such a program known and discussed it. This was very important because we made clear that the coming political development of the working class is closely bound up with the building of our party. The strength of our party lies in the fact that it is based on the political lessons of the big class struggles of the past and these lessons are embodied within the Trotskyist movement. It is now, we have now the 75th anniversary of the founding of the Fourth International. In a very important impo article on the World Socialist website, we drew out that in the founding program of the Fourth International, the transitional program, uh, this program begins with the words the world political situation as a whole is chiefly characterized by a historical crisis of the leadership of the proletariat. This fundamental assessment is extremely important for the present situation. It was
since the founding of the Fourth International, the Trotskyists have consistently fought against every form of opportunism and nationalism. To know this political struggle of the past decades and to study it is the most important preparation for the coming class struggle. For us, the struggle does not end on election day, quite the opposite. No matter who will be the government after the next Sunday, it will a government whose program is dictated by the banks and large corporations, and it will be the start of great class struggles. Now, we call on, uh, upon every one of you to participate in our intensive campaign to build our party. Thank you very much. Now I think that this is Comrade Johannes Stern speaking now. Comrade Christoph Dreyer will now read out uh, reactions and comments by our audience. There are first uh, comments we have. First to give you a summary, we have 169 uh, nodes registered with up to 20 listeners. Um, those who were late uh, did not have to register, so we have probably a few more. We have uh, audience from Leipzig, Frankfurt, Hamburg, Essen, Kassel. Munich, and uh, also there were many international audience in Britain, France, the Netherlands, Romania, Russia, Sri Lanka, Australia, the US, Canada, Brazil, and many more. That is today we had a real international meeting in which many international guests were interested to discuss the issue of the left party. There have been a whole number of comments, uh, people who uh, say thank you for the lecture. There are also a couple of questions, for example, from Sri Lanka. The question is, uh, it, the question is, maybe you can say more about the ideological foundations of this party and their, their ideology. We have a question from Frankfurt. The left party is publicly calling for a ban of all weapon sales to Syria. How is the left, can the left party unite this demand with their previous demand that was to arm the Syrian rebels? This is the question from Frankfurt. And then we have a question from uh, a listener called Ralf Uwe who says he agrees that the left party is not an alternative, but why? Do we make place the struggle against the left party in the center of this meeting instead of explaining our own perspective? We have then a number of comments who say that this is an important issue, not only in Germany but internationally, because these are fundamental issues of perspectives, and who uh, thank uh, Ulrich Rippert for his 
remarks. Maybe we can now have answers to the first three questions. Now the question is, uh, who wants to reply? Uh, Ulrich Rippert is replying to the first question. On the political and ideological foundations of the left party. The left party, as I said, came into being from a fusion of some leftovers of social democracy and the Stalinist bureaucracy. In order to understand what the left party is, you must study the role of the Stalinist bureaucracy and the political and theoretical struggle led by the Fourth International uh, against Stalinism. Stalinism emerged under conditions in which the Russian Revolution was isolated and there was a strong ideological pressure, political pressure on the first worker state and under these conditions a privileged layer developed within the first worker state which had their own interests and was above all characterized by a nationalist outlook. What characterizes Stalinism above all, as I uh, briefly mentioned in my lecture, was nationalism, their theory of building socialism in a single country. This was the position with which the Stalin faction reacted to national isolation and this became the slogan under which this privileged layer within the Soviet Union began to develop. This nationalist policy led them to abandon the international perspectives on which the Russian Revolution had been based and they vehemently began to fight this internationalism. During the 30s, all leading members of the Bolshevik party uh, uh, were killed. The Stalinist bureaucracy organized a genocide of the revolutionary leadership of the working class. And all this was characterized by their nationalist standpoints which were in the center of their political perspectives and orientation. That is what characterizes Stalinism is above all nationalism. And today this takes the form as uh, was I tried to bring out with some examples. Today it takes the form of these totally reactionary positions put forward by Lafontaine Wagenknecht and other people within the left party. But also social democracy and the union bureaucracy is characterized by these nationalist conceptions. This entire standpoint that the issue is to defend national interests is central to policies and ideology of the left party. And this is what makes them a true instrument of German imperialism against the working class and for the preparation of war as we have witnessed with the Syrian war and the entire return of German imperialism. The second question which was asked or which I would like to answer is 
why do we give such importance to the uh, um, analyzing the left party? I think we should explain this more precisely. With the struggle of the left party is central to our program. The struggle against the left party is central to our program because the issue is our task is to fight for the political independence of the working class. We have drawn out in several lectures that because of the international economic crisis social conflicts intensify enormously and the revolution in Egypt was the starting point of an international radicalization of the working class. We explained that under these conditions the question of the leadership of the working class is posed very starkly and this means that the political independence of the working class can only be created in a struggle against those political tendencies who oppress the working class and this is why the struggle against the left party is so important. Anybody who believes that the left party can just be sort of overtaken it is uh, it's wrong. A revolutionary political perspective can only be brought into the working class against these nationalist positions of the left party because this is the way the workers and youth learn and are educated in the roles of history and can be one to our party. Therefore I think it would be wrong to dismiss the importance of this struggle against the left party and if you have followed our election campaign during the past weeks you could see that we had most discussion and most, most people who agreed with us came over this, these issues. It's not simply a question which we sort of, it is not a question which we have invented but it is posed very objectively in class struggle. This question, uh, can this other question from Frankfurt be repeated please? Uh, Christoph explains that until recently the left party demanded a stop, uh, demanded an arming of the opposition in Syria and now they officially call for the end of all sale of weapons to Syria. So they, they shifted their official position. Uh, Comrade Rippert answers that it is very clear that the left party during the past two weeks collaborated with very closely with the so-called opposition in Syria and also supported the arming of these groups. Now more and more it has become clear that a, a military strike is a much more effective and manner to enforce imperialist interests. Maybe Comrade Johannes who has written on these issues intensively can go into this but it is part of the role of the left party at the present time. They have from the beginning they presented this opposition as an expression of the will of the people and thereby supported precisely the policies put forward by US and German imperialism and that is to mobilize forces with, it with whom a regime change can be effected. Comrade Johannes wants to speak on this issue too. 
he says, if you looked at the different tendencies of the left party during the past two weeks, uh, two years, there were always also differences among themselves and different tactical issues. For example, Marx 21 from the beginning. Uh, portray the imperialist intervention as a revolution and openly Marx 21 is one of those tendencies who openly called for the arming of the rebels and there's another wing the old Stalinists around Gerke who organized the meetings with Michel Kilo. Of course, he does not have principal differences with Marx 21. But uh, Wolfgang Gerke always, in a cynical manner, covered his initiatives as peace initiatives. Uh, he claimed that he supported only those oppositionists who are against armed struggle and who are against an imperialist intervention and against uh, ethnic conflicts. But precisely those people with whom he collaborated, like Michel Kilo, support all these points. They are openly in favor of a military strike. They are for arming the rebels and they collaborate with the extreme Islamist groups like the Al-Nusra Front and Al-Qaeda. And Gerke, of course, knows this very well. He knows the positions of the people whom he is supporting, like Michel Kilo. And these positions were also put forward at podiums of the left parties in which he participated. So the left party is really a party which always attempts to cloak their real policies with all sorts of lies and euphemisms and a real oral language. They organize hearts for the social cuts and they claim that they are opposed to it. They finance the uh, pro-imperialist opposition in Syria who is promoting war and claim that they are an anti-war party and so on. And, of course, the, within the population here, there's a very big opposition against any military intervention. This was also expressed in Britain, where Parliament was forced to vote against war. Obama had massive problems to get uh, the vote through Congress, and the left party was extremely concerned that a military strike would lead to mass protests uh, here in Germany and therefore they sort of intensified their lies during the past weeks especially during the election campaign and tried to cover their tracks it is interesting there was it's interesting that there was one commentary in their paper uh, written by an old Stalinist uh, in Austria he suddenly spoke about the pseudo-lefts within the left party who were openly promoting a military strike in Syria. Of course, he is himself part and parcel of these pseudo-lefts, one of their leading commentators. But there are tendencies within the left party who, are know, who know very well and who are very conscious that there is a vacuum between the party, our party, and the interest of the working class on one side and the left party and they are very concerned about this so they intensified their campaign of lies during the election campaign but their policies as the, our lecture made clear one has to look at their policies very precisely you cannot judge the left party based on their election posters or uh, these are just uh, phrases. 
also Merkel claims that she favors social policies. That is, all parties during the election campaign portray themselves as uh, having a social conscience. The left party is just the same. Uh, Comrade Christoph says there are a number of more commentaries, comments, for example, from Munich. Uh, we have a comment of a listener saying that there are many more points in which the left party uh, makes clear their right wing position. He points to the crisis in Cyprus where when the banks were plundered in Cyprus and the economy was ruined by the federal government of Germany, the left party supported this and portrayed this as a measure against casino capitalism and essentially shared the position of Schäuble, the finance minister. Another listen comment says points to the military coup in Egypt which was welcomed by the left party who explained that this was necessary and that democracy was not on the agenda now and they essentially supported the military coup similar as in Syria supported those forces in Egypt who were behind the military coup. Then there's another question which from Essen in how far there are forces within the left party who support the Syrian CP which is pre present on the side of Assad. This is another concrete question Comrade Johannes replies, the left party on the one side has close connections with the opposition, to anyway to the official opposition, which is made up to a large part of all uh, Stalinists or uh, groups who have split off from the official communist parties or the Arab socialist parties. But on the other side, they also have close contacts within the Assad regime itself. People like Gerke also know the leading representatives of the official communist parties. And as we have demonstrated, he supports the policies of regime change but he is also making use of his connections and makes them fruitful for the interests of German imperialism when it comes to forming a new regime in Damascus. And what is becoming clear now when you follow the debates is, and its strategic plans is that they do want a military strike and do want to continue arming the opposition but maybe a new regime will be built which is made up of representatives both of the opposition as well as the old regime and of course then the left party in this bringing about such a result plays a big role in order to defend the interest of German imperialism and will make use of their contacts. What we've done during the past two years is precisely that. What the left party has been doing, of course, sorry. The opposition politicians to which they had contact were integrated in their alliance and one, one day for example, Jabra and Kilo will take 
positions in a transitional government, then the German government, of course, has best possibilities to uh, use them in their interest. So I think the left party is prepared to work with everybody, uh, even with the biggest criminals, in order to defend the interests of German imperialism. This is brought out in the war in Syria. They have these contacts not only in Syria, but worldwide. This is not limited to Syria. But the left party is an integ integral part of German foreign policy. Other representatives of them are very active in Southeast Asia. André Brie, for example, is active in relation to Russia. The left party is a party of German imperialism. And they are using all the possibilities at their disposal to defend it. Ulrich Rippert is speaking. There is a fundamental difference between those we call pseudo left and our own party. If you follow their discussion, they regard the left party always from a petty bourgeois democratic standpoint. The difference between a Marxist standpoint and a petty bourgeois democratic standpoint is that the petty bourgeois democrat reacts to the political situation from the standpoint of creating so-called left majorities. And then uh, he takes the left party as at face value, but this is wrong. The left party is not a left party, and it does not put forward left policies. It's a bourgeois party, which is more and more openly promoting right-wing positions. And from their entire history, they are pro-capitalist party. But the petty bourgeois democrat looks at the political situation just from the standpoint of finding left majorities. And from that standpoint, he tries to attribute to the left party some kind of left-wing positions. As a Marxist, we have a totally different approach. We understand that the future of society is not decided by majorities in parliament, but by class struggle. That is the coming development depends upon the working class intervening into social developments. And in order to do so, the working class has to liberate themselves from all bourgeois influences. And this is what we mean when we speak about the political independence of the working class. So while the petty bourgeois democrat always looks for this and that alliance, we perceive our task as separating the working class from these petty bourgeois and bourgeois tendencies who are trying to integrate them in all sorts of maneuvers. The worker class must prepare for the class struggles in which it has to intervene with an international program as an independent social force. This fundamental difference is very important when you want to understand our, our position, a Marxist position, in opposition to a reactionary petty bourgeois position. However, the central question which must be made clear is that these, the left party is in reality a right-wing bourgeois party. And this is what I try to bring out. It becomes clear in their social policies and also in their support for imperialist war abroad.
Johannes Stern wants to add another point. These are not just rhetorical issues. But it is a uh, preparation of what is to come. We have spoken about the uh, tendencies bound up with the left party in relation to Egypt. And we have drawn out how in Egypt the working class more and more became radicalized in the revolution. And then at a certain point, the petty bourgeois Democrats, who in the beginning spouted phrases about democracy and so and so forth, then more and more openly began to support a military coup. And I think Uli's comparison to the situation after the First World War and the role of the SPD makes clear where the left party will position themselves during the coming class struggles. And why is it so important? We make clear to the working class the class nature of these forces. Workers and youth must have no illusions that the working class will play any different role in the coming class struggles than precisely this. Uh, this is not an exaggeration, but has been demonstrated by the recent history in Egypt. And if you read the statements of Michel Kilo, whom Wolfgang Gerke of the Left Party calls his friend, you understand the posi real pos position of the Left Party. I can only call upon all of you to reread our articles on the left party on the WSWS because all this is an international phenomenon all these tendencies play a similar role internationally and we prepare the working class by explaining the class nature of these groups from that standpoint I think we had a very important meeting and after the federal elections, uh, such a situation will emerge also in Germany. The uh, social attacks and the war policies will lead to more and more attack from below, to more and more resistance from below. Our election campaign was directed not to election date, but to the building of our party over the whole of the coming period. We now have 75 years of the Fourth International. We want to go onto the offenses, offensive with our own history. We will have more online meetings. I think our online meetings during this election campaign were a big success. Uh, in you making use of new technology in order to address an international audience. So I think Comet should read the WSWS, visit our, our website and inform themselves about our next activities. On the coming Saturday we'll have the European Workers Conference which will also be broadcast in all probability. It's not clear yet uh, how we go about this but you will find information on this on the website. I will invite uh, our international audience to follow this meeting as well. And uh, so I would like to say goodbye to our audience internationally. Of course you can write to us, you can ask questions, you can uh, email us and uh, of course we are can continue the discussion on this basis uh, which we will also do uh, here in Berlin. And uh, so please uh, continue the discussion. Thank you very much for participating and see you next time.